That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. about the validity of his flight have no place here today as the crowds go wild over the first man to conquer space. On April 12, 1961, Soviet pilot and cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin made history at the age of 27 by becoming the first man to go into space and complete a single orbit of Earth. In 1957, around 10 years after the start of the Cold War, a Soviet R-7 intercontinental ballistic missile launched Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite and man-made object to be placed in Earth's orbit. This was the start of the space race. Both the Soviets and Americans then set their eyes toward sending man into space. After years of rigorous training and constructing, the Russians sent Yuri Gagarin up to space. Yuri Gagarin was regarded as the most important man of the century. Many newspapers regarded this as a triumph for the Soviet Union. However, for the Americans, it was a tragedy. Around one month later, the US sent American astronaut Alan Shepard into space. Even though he went into space, he wasn't the first. So the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA for short, started the Apollo program, which was designed to land man on the moon, bringing forth new technology that is still being used today. Without the Apollo program, we would not be where we are today in space technology. Since President John F. Kennedy made the promise to send man to the moon before the end of the 1960s, NASA got to work as quickly as they could. They began with the Apollo 1 mission. The Apollo 1 mission was a test flight of the Apollo Command and Service Module with a crew. The launch date was scheduled for February 21, 1967, and pre-flight tests were scheduled a month before on January 27th of that year. At around 1 p.m. on Friday, January 27, 1967, Captain Gus Grissom, Roger B. Schaff, and Ed White boarded their command module. A couple of minutes after the mission started, alarms went off concerning oxygen levels in the command module. The alert was ignored, and moments later, a spark in the cabin caused the whole command module to blow up and be engulfed in flames. The crew tried getting out of the module, but later it was found that the hatch door would not open. Officers tried to help them get out in time, but it was too late. All three crew members, Gus Grissom, Roger B. Schaff, and Ed White, all died within seconds of the fire start. This tragedy shook the United States, and it was not what NASA expected for their first mission. Despite the tragedy, they kept on working towards their goal of being the first to send man to the moon. Around nine months after the Apollo 1 tragedy, the NASA program moved on to their next mission, the Apollo 4 mission. The Apollo 4 mission was a test flight of the Saturn V launch vehicle, which is the part of the rocket that launches artificial satellites or spaceships into space. This would be the same type of launch vehicle later used in the historic Apollo 11 mission. The Apollo 4 mission was initiated on November 9, 1967. The rocket completed three orbits of the Earth in around 8 hours, 36 minutes, and 59 seconds. The mission was a triumph and promoted NASA to continue with the Apollo program. Next up was the Apollo 5 mission, which was taken on January 22, 1968. This mission was a test of the lunar module. The lunar module is the part of the spacecraft that brings man to the moon. It was to be launched into space by a Saturn 1B-204 rocket. The mission lasted around 11 hours and 10 minutes and was a big success. Apollo 6 and 7 were the first uncrewed and crewed flights whose goal was to complete elliptical orbits around Earth. Apollo 6 completed three orbits in around 10 hours, while Apollo 7 completed 163 orbits in around 10 days. Next up was Apollo 8, which was taken on December 21st in 1968. It lasted around 6 days and 3 hours. The mission's objective was to orbit the moon. The mission was a success, and the splashdown was on December 27th, 1968. Apollo 9 would be the first crewed lunar module in test. For the mission to be a win, the command module and service module had to undock from the lunar module, make a 180 turn, and extract the lunar module. The lunar module's name was Spider. All people and parts of the rocket were launched into Five, space by a Saturn four, V rocket on three, March 3rd, 1969. Two, one, the Kennedy Space zero, Center launch complex. 39. The mission was carried out over the next 10 days. Splashdown was in the North Atlantic Ocean on March 13th of that same year. The mission was a triumph proving that everything had worked accurately. Now came time for the Apollo 10 mission. The Apollo 10 mission was regarded as a dress rehearsal for the first moon landing, which was going to happen around two months later. This mission would test all components and procedures of the rocket and spaceship. The mission was initiated at the Kennedy Space Launch Center Complex 39 on May 18, 1969. 
The mission carried out over the next eight days, and over the period of those days, rocket tests, command and service module tests, and lunar module tests were made, and all were triumphant. Apollo 10 then started its way back to Earth. According to the 2002 Guinness World Records, the Apollo 10 mission set the record for the fastest speed a human has ever traveled in a vehicle at 24,816 miles per hour, around 36,396 feet per second at re-entry. Now came time for the historic Apollo 11 mission. The mission was planned to be the first mission where man would walk on the moon as well as the climax in the space race. NASA started recruiting crew members. It began with Neil Alden Armstrong, former American astronaut, naval aviator, and test pilot. He would be the commander of the Apollo 11 mission. Next was Michael Collins. He was a former American astronaut, test pilot, and he would be the command module pilot for the Apollo 11 mission. Last but not least, there was Edwin Eugene Aldrin Jr., better known as Buzz Aldrin. He was an American engineer, former astronaut, fighter pilot, and would be the lunar module pilot for the Apollo 11 mission. With the crew, the mission began. The launch date was scheduled for July 16, 1969. On that day, at the Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39, a Saturn V 506 rocket launched Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin into space to begin their nine-day journey to the moon and back to Earth. This is one of the most historic moments in American history. The Saturn V's first stage launched Apollo spacecraft into space, then detached. The second stage then moved the Apollo spacecraft farther into space. After that, the second stage detached, and the third stage of the rocket launched briefly to put the Apollo spacecraft into a parking orbit. After riding around the Earth, the third stage fired again and set the Apollo spacecraft to their final destination. After being away from Earth, the astronauts had to pull off a mid-flight maneuver to attach the command and service module to the lunar module. After this was completed, the Saturn V's third stage detached. That whole process only took around four hours to complete, and for the next three days, the Apollo spacecraft glided through space. It then reached its target and was pulled into orbit by the moon's gravity. At this time, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin transferred to the lunar module while Collins stayed in command and service module. They then detached from each other and the lunar module began its descent to the moon. They successfully landed on the moon and it was later described as one of the most triumphant events in human history. According to NASA, an estimated 560 million people watched as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin took their first steps on the moon, noting Neil Armstrong's word here. That's one small step for man. One after around one day of exploring, the lunar module launched from the moon and connected back to the command and service module. Neil and Buzz then moved back into the command and service module as the lunar module detached and floated away. After this, Apollo began its two and a half day journey back to Earth. Apollo then jettisoned its service module, having its now exposed heat shield facing Earth. It then began its descent into the North Pacific Ocean at around 25,000 miles per hour. Parachutes were then deployed and the command module successfully splashed down in the Pacific Ocean. It was then recovered by the USS Hornet a while later. The U.S. finally triumphed over the Soviets in the race to put a man on the moon. It was one of the most important events in U.S. history. In the following three years, NASA had six more missions, Apollo 12 through 17. All missions were planned to go to the moon, and every single mission was a triumph, except for the Apollo 13 mission, which had a couple of technical difficulties. The U.S. going to the moon six times in three years, the Russians and the Americans declared the end of the space race. After extensive planning and preparation, on July 15, 1975, the Soviets launched Russian cosmonauts Alexei Leonov and Valery Kubasov in a Soyuz spacecraft. Seven and a half hours later in the US, the Apollo spacecraft would be launched on its last mission ever, with astronauts Donald Slayton, Vance Brand, and Thomas Stanford on board. Two days later, the two spacecrafts met in space and docked together. A hatch door was opened, and a couple of moments later, the Soviets and Americans shook hands in space, symbolizing a union between the the two countries for many years to come. This historic handshake marked the end of the space race, and from this day on, the Soviet Union and the US would help in multiple projects together. As Alexei Leonov said, cooperation means friendship, friendship means peace. Let's live in peace.